Hey developers, so today we are going to look at Bootstrap View and we're going to build an interactive responsive app with it. You can see it right here. And I'm going to walk you through how to get this up and running. We're going to use Vuex. And yeah, so stay all the way to the end and learn all about it. I want to go ahead and thank our sponsor Eduonix, E-D-U-O-N-I-X. They have this amazing Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale where you can get up to 90% off in a bunch of their courses. If you go to explore here, go to courses, software development, web development, you could see they have all sorts of courses from Angular 8 to React to Vue. And what's nice too is you can set the level. So if I want to just have beginner courses, I just check mark here and it'll filter just for beginner courses. Uh, however, if I want like more professional or intermediate, you can check mark it and you can get in professional or intermediate courses as well. And then when you click on it, you can see there Normally $76, you can get them as low as $5, which is the lowest I've seen a lot of these courses ever. So make sure you click on the link in the description below and you can get some really amazing deals. Make sure you can click on the link below and check out Eduonix. Thanks. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I am a full stack software developer. I also do a lot of Vue.js and I'm a big fan of a lot of the different frameworks and libraries out there. Okay. so. If you don't know, this is the app we're going to create today. So I'm going to walk you guys through this app step by step. We actually might break it into two videos. We'll see. And we're going to use Bootstrap View to get it up and running. So you can see here I'm using the Bootstrap View navigation. I'm using the search bar here. I'm also using the cards. I'm using the tooltips, which I haven't changed the name of. I just call it tooltip content. I'm using the modals. And then I'm also using the pagination, which right now I have a JSON file that I'm pulling all this stuff from. I also have the search is working. So if I, I don't know, if I type ABC, I have a little loading spinner is another thing. And then you only see what it returns back. If I hit enter, it'll just return everything. It's all paginated. So if I do, I don't know, something that has just a subset, you can see here now I only have two pages and it's just grabbing the job names as easy as easy. So this would be like, a very simple job board that you might end up using if you were a uh, developer and you're just trying to create a job search app. Uh, there's actually a jobby search to in free code camp. This has nothing to do with it. This is just my implementation. I didn't even look at the what free code camp did. This is just what I, I decided to do. And I'm using props. This is all componentized. So I think this is not just a good example of using bootstrap view, but also just a good beginner level view app that you guys can learn from. So, you know, make sure you watch all the way to the end. I also put up all the code up on GitHub. As always, the link will be in the description of where you guys can grab that. And the, one of the reasons I'm doing this is because I've been listening to user feedback from you guys. I did a poll the other day and everybody said you really guys want you guys want more Bootstrap view content. Now, this is based off of Bootstrap v4. So, if you're a v3 user, this is probably not the video for you, but there's a lot of similarities between Bootstrap 3, V3 and V4. I actually did a few Bootstrap sites back in the day. It's been a while, so I haven't done a ton of them. Um, so as I was building this app, I was kind of relearning a lot of the things <laughs> again, which is good. So like I said, I used I used a handful of these different components to, to create this. And uh, yeah, let's, so let's just jump in here. And also, before I begin... If you guys have any questions, I'd love to hear comments in the description below. What do you think of Bootstrap View? Is this something that you guys use? I know there's also a subset of people that refuse to use any sort of component UI library, um, be it a material design or, or otherwise inside any of their apps. Um, I talked to my buddy Dylan about this the other day. I want to know, if, is that you? Are you one of the people that refuse to use a Bootstrap type development Bootstrap? or a UI component library. If you are, leave a comment below. I'd love to, to hear what you're using. I mean, how did you guys build up your library of components? That's one thing you'll find after doing this for a while is if you worked on any sort of project for a while, you end up having a lot of different components. And if you end up creating multiple apps, creating, pulling out individual components and creating your own libraries is probably a good idea. But I know some companies don't. So I'd love to hear your experiences. All right. So I'm going to live code this. I'm going to try to cut out the boring parts and uh, do transitions where I can if I mess up too much. But for the most part, this is going to be kind of a just a nice, fun live code of doing it. 
All right, so I already have a node installed, of course. I'll just start off with that. I'm using 10.15.3, and I'm going to now, uh, I already have Vue installed, so I have Vue CLI 4.0.5. If you don't know how to install either one of those, I would go and look that up. I think it's npm install at Vue CLI, slash CLI, I believe, and that will install Vue CLI. And then the insta instructions to install Node, of course, on the Node website. So once you have the Vue CLI installed, I'm going to do a view create, and I'm going to call it Jobby App YouTube. And it's going to ask me a set of questions. So I kind of want to do it a different way here. So I'm going to make this a little bigger. So first, uh, I don't. I really like TypeScript, but we're not going to do TypeScript in this one. But I do want a router. I do want Vuex. I want a CSS preprocessor. And I do want a lintern formatter. I'm not going to do any end-to-end -end tests and unit tests in this. Do you history mode? Yes. I'm just going to use uh, I'm going to use Node SAS, and then I like ESLint with Prettier and Lint on Save, and I'll put in dedicated config files. And do I save it? No. Okay, so now it's going to go ahead and create the app for me. This will just take a moment. Cool. All right. It says it's done. So I'm going to change directories into it and run serve. I'll make sure it runs. And if I do that, let's see here, it will open up localhost 8080. Cool. So, yep, here it is. Looks like it's working. Now, I want to go ahead and install Bootstrap. So, if you look at the official documentation and they're getting started, they do have a Vue CLI uh, add on. So, if you do Vue add Bootstrap Vue, that'll install it. But you can also install it through an NPM package and a bunch of other ways. But since we're using Vue CLI 4, why, is, why not use it this way? So, Vue add Bootstrap Vue, and then this will just take a moment. Okay, so it's going to ask me a few questions here. Use Babyfil, uh, Babel Polyfill. I'll just say yes. And it does give me a mention here about uh, conflicting versions for project dependencies using SAS Loader. It says something about 8 is undefined and 7. I actually, um, I would just ignore this error. It doesn't give me any problems. Um, so if you see that error, don't worry about it. Cool, so what it did is it ran this program and it updated a few of my files here. So now... You see here, now I have my file system here, and you see what it did. It added this plugins folder, and it added the bootstrap view, which you can see here. It's running bootstrap view. Um, it just imports the two CSS files, and then uses this view.use. And then this is referenced in the main file. You can see here, now we just import this in, and it goes ahead and runs all that for us. So it's all up and running. For us, of course, it adds it to the package.json too. Okay, so I'm going to run npm run serve, and I'm not going to worry too much more about this terminal because that's the only thing. Uh, actually, yeah, that's the only thing we're going to use right now. We're going to use fetch instead of Axios to do some fetching later. So let's make sure that we're still okay. And by the way, I did do a build on it. There's no problems with that either. So here it is, refreshing. I always like to double check the console. After I install something, make sure there's no some hidden error somewhere. No, looks good. So we're going to do a little bit of cleanup here. So you can see here we have this new, our bootstrap view. And if we go to app, this is how it's being created at the beginning. But what I really want to do is it loads this home view. This is, if you look here, it's the default route with slash. I want to make this a, a little nicer. So first, I'm going to delete out the hello world, delete out the logo. Delete out the import, delete out the import here. And now that's all we have now at the top is this home and about. Perfect. And I guess we can do a little bit of more cleanup. I don't want this hello world. I'm going to just delete it because we don't want it right now. And that's it I'm going to do for the routes. I'm not going to have anything other than the home and about. So in our home, let's see if we can do the first thing is to create uh, some kind of layout. So if we go back to View Bootstrap and we look at the grid system here, we could see that you have to always create this B container, and then you can create rows and then columns. So let's just copy and paste the brand new empty one in here. And remember, we always have to have, we can make B container, I guess, the, the top here. And if we look, 
at it. So we have, here's our three column layout that we have right here. Uh, so you can see here, this just defaults to the three column layout. But what I really want is we can do a line here. Actually, in the B container, I don't want, I don't have any, I don't have this class anywhere, so I'm not going to deal with it. But in the B road here, I can put a line vertical. And then this should center everything that's in here. So now if I do that, it doesn't look too much different, but everything is centered. You can also, if you don't remember all the different commands, you can go here to this row, hit CLS, and you can just kind of look at the different ones in here. So like here's different margins, margin auto, large. And the way it works, and I'm probably not describing this very well, but with this contain, you always use the B container at the top, and then you can use B rows and then B f and then B columns. And then in the B, in the grid options, you have this extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large, where you use this either uh, SM, MD, LG, or XL. And this refer to different screen sizes. So you can make, you can have different behavior based on the screen size. So like if it's XLS, you can have three columns, or XL, you can have it three columns, but maybe on small mobile, you can have it one column. So that's the idea of it. So you can see here, this is a couple of different examples with the different column rows. Uh, you can also have it equal. There's also a ton of different built-in CSS classes that you can use, like W width 100% that you can add in there. Um, so just look through the documentation or look at the official Bootstrap documentation. You can see it. You can see that they can do here. This is column large 2, 1 of 3. And then this one is columns 12 for MD auto. And then large 2, uh, 3 of 3. And you can see this is a way of, of structuring your content. But we don't really want that big of a deal. You can see here's the line V. So this is like you're using uh, display flex and you're using justify or uh, align content. You can either start, center, or end. But there's also align horizontal too. If you wanted to align things horizontal with align H. Um, but for me, well, I'm just gonna do align vertical center. And what I need to do now is I want to actually show uh, cards. So let's see if we can create a really simple card here and and begin with that. So I'm, I'm going to just I'll create a column here. And then in this B column, I'm going to use a B card. And inside the B card, I'll put the B card text, which I'll do lorem 10. And then I'll add a B button, which is a button. And then from there, uh, I can put a variant. And this is what color it's going to look like. So we can do primary. So there's a whole way you can customize your layouts in Bootstrap. Um, but for now, we're not going to get too much into that. But just realize there's there's a primary look, secondary. Let's see if I can find it in the documentation. If you go primary, let's see, colors maybe? Color, variants, the CSS mapping. Yeah, so you can see here the, the primary, secondary, success. So these are the different colors, like blue is primary, and then this green is secondary. You can, of course, I believe, um, update that in your SCSS. Yeah, you can go into your variables and overwrite them if you wanted to. See right here, you can go in and change it from primary blue to something else if you wanted to update that. So very primary variant, and then we're going to call this, I don't know, apply. And one thing we want with this B card is we can give it a few options. First is we can give it a title. And we can go this, I don't know, this is a card. And we can also add an image source. So I'm going to just hard code it into pixum.photos. Image equals 25. Image alt, you can put alt text on it. I don't know, uh, job info. There is, this will place it on the top. We can put tags on it, like it's an article. 
And for style, we can do max width 20 rem. And then class, this MB is a margin bottom 2. So let's see what it looks like. Cool. All right. So we have a card. You know, it kind of looks like the card we have here. So yeah, it's just picking a random placeholder for the image and just having this text. And obviously, none of this stuff does anything. So let's take a look what it looks like if we add in a few cards. So I'm going to, I'm just going to have, I think I'm going to have multiple columns here in just one row and see what happens. So I'm going to grab this column. I'm just copying and pasting it now. Paste it once. And I'll paste it twice. Let's do it one more time. Okay. So now we have four cards. And if you look at it, they all squeeze together, but they're not really reactive anyway. They just all seem to do the same thing. So Let's see, can we make this a little bit more reactive so that way that, or responsive that is, so that way when we're in smaller screen sizes that it kind of stacks up on itself using just Bootstrap? Okay, so if we want to make this more responsive, what we can do is we can put B column. Now, if you remember from our layout grid system, we have different offsets. So for larger or smaller screens, we have different uh, sizes, this MD, for greater than 768, greater than 992, and greater than 1200. So we can set how big the columns are because it's a 12 column grid system. So if I put MD equals three here, MD equals three, and I'm gonna copy and paste that for all the different columns. So I'm gonna add it to this one. So I could do this faster if I do this. And then like this. Cool, I got them all in there. And then if I look back here, and now if I change it, it squeezes together, and then it, well, as soon as you get past that 768, it just sits on top of each other, so it's a lot more responsive now. Cool. All right, so obviously we don't want to copy and paste B card into a bunch of different um, times in our home component. So we probably want to do is refactor this into its own component. So that's pretty easy. So all we need to do is go into our source, and then we have plugins, router, store, views, and uh, assets. So we can create our own components folder. So I'm going to create components. And then, because I think I accidentally deleted the component folder when I got rid of the Hello World. And now I'm going to create a new file called jobcard.view. And if I need to rename that, jobcard.view. And now I can do my little snippet that I have called vBase. I have one of the view extensions that I installed. So that way I can just type some things and it creates it all for me. And I guess the easiest thing to do would be to go back into our home view. So one thing I like to do is split my screen when I'm using Visual Studio Code. That way I can kind of switch between them. So if I go to home here, I should be able to just copy. I'll do it with the column too. I'm going to copy and paste one of these. And I'm using Vim. That's how I'm doing the copy and pasting, by the way. OK, so here it is. So now, since I have this component in here, I should be able to just, um, I'm going to go ahead and just comment all this out, all the B column stuff. Make sure nothing there. Yep. And then I have to import in uh, the component. So I'm going to import job card from, and I can use this little at components job card dot view. And now I can just put it inside here, which I'm going to call it job dash card and job card. And it's giving me an error that it doesn't like that I haven't actually used it anywhere. <laughs> so I have this big B row. So I'm going job.card. Here it is. It looks kind of funny. Um, since I'm using it in a component, 
One thing I like to do is just remove this from here. See what it looks like. Okay, so it looks okay in there. It's just because I'm using it in a component, the columns get messed up because it's not in a B container. It's inside of a component. Cool, so it looks okay there. And now I can just copy and paste this a few times and see what it looks like. Let's see, this is my, yep, you can see here it's still working responsively. If I make it a little smaller, yep, looks okay there. Cool, so now I can just comment this out and delete it all, which I will do right now. All right, deleted. Okay, so that's still not too helpful. We have a few things we need to add. Of course, let's add in that nav bar that we wanted. And by the way, this job card, I had the B card. If you want to look in the official documentation again, I'm going to keep on referring you guys back to this. You can see all the different props and things you can pass to it. The B card text, the B card, the title, the text. If you look at the properties here, um, there's just tons of them, body class, title tag, header tag, header HTML. You can just you can add footers too if I wanted to. So yeah, there's tons of stuff you can do here, but I am not. Yeah, you can see you can make a little footer right here, which uh, which is fine. So you could do like footer. So I'll just go ahead and add it here. Looks like footer, card footer. Now if you look at it, now I have a card footer on each one of them. Cool. All right, let's move on to the top navigation. So uh, to do that, we have our components now, but we need some top navigation. So I'm going to create a new component again. I'm going to call it top header.view. And once again, I'm going to use my snippet. Now in this one, we're going to use a plain Jane uh, B nav bar. And I'm going to cheat here for the sake of simplicity. I'm going to just grab the B nav bar. And I'm going to take a look at it. So is that it? No, there's a few different nav bars that I like. The basic basic one is this one. So I'm going to grab this whole nav bar. And we're going to start off with this. And I'm going to make it bigger so you guys can actually see it. I don't know a hot key to like adjust the size of your split screen. If you guys know which one what that is, let me know. And cool. You, by the way, when I saved it there, it automatically formatted. It's part of using our prettier and our auto formatting. I think also, I think in my settings, open settings UI, UI I think I have like an auto save. Um, on save, auto fix on save. I have that turned on too. Okay, so we actually want to see this somewhere. So I'm going to go open up our app view. And so this is where the main entry point is. And it has this router view, and that's where all the routes get taken. But we really want to do is, is go ahead and add that, that um, navigation bar to the top. So I think right below this, we'll just add a top header. And of course, I need to now import it in. Now I, had, I don't have a script tag, so I'm going to create one. And once again, a snippet installed it for me. And then components is an object. Almost everything when you're adding these in view is an object. And I'll call it top header. And I'll do this top header. And of course, now I have to import it in. So import top header from, remember the at sign, make it a little bit easier, components top header dot view. Okay, now I just need to make sure you use it. All right, so let's see what it looks like. Let's see, did it work? I got a console error. Unknown custom element top dot header. So there's a problem here, which I don't know why. Let's take a look to see if we can troubleshoot it. I forgot an N here, components. There we go. So now we have our top bar here. And what I can do is I don't really want these in here. But in my top header, I'm going to make a quick adjustment here. And I have the font really high, too. That's another reason why I can't easily do this. So I'm going to go to the top header. And I can actually get rid of this disabled here. I can put in a 2. So it does have a prop for 2 that I can put in. So this is going to be 2 
two, and that's going to equal slash. So I'm going to put this as home, and then I add another nav guide, a nav item for about. Okay. And let's see what else we got here. So now I have a nav and about. So cool. So now I can switch between my different rats right here. And I don't really like this how it's, I can't even see it. It's this kind of weird green color. So I'm going to make that white. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to make sure I don't have any errors. I'm gonna refresh the page, no errors. So if I look inside here, I always forget what it is. If you come inside here, you can see this, this link right here. So I'm just going to copy that and go into my styles. And then I'm just going to put my color equals white. So this will be when the router link exact active is on the navigation bar for the anchor tag. So now it's white. So now it looks a lot better, I think. So we have this drop downs too for language and user, and we don't really need those. So I'm going to delete those. Let's see here. So here's our form. So I'm going to delete this drop down for both of these. Don't need any of this. I'm delete. Cool. All right. And we did save that. Okay. So now here's our nav bar. So we have our nav bar. We have our cards. Um, let's add a tool tip to the apply button right here. Uh, well, let's do two things first. Let's go back to home. And we have our carbs here, but wouldn't it be cool if we can use a backend service to grab a JSON file and then display as many cards as we need? So that shouldn't be too bad. So what we need to do to get that working is to use fetch. We're going to use fetch, and we're going to create a JSON file. And that JSON file is just going to have um, the some random text and, and the information we want to put in each one of these cards. So I'm going to cheat a little bit again. I already have a JSON file here that I created earlier. So I'm going to create it. So once again, I'll close a few of these. And I'm going to go to public, and I'm going to create a new file. And I guess I'm going to call it jobs.json. And I'm going to save it. So here's my JSON. All I have is the name of the, essentially, if this was a job board, this would be the name of the job, and that's it. I mean, if I wanted to, I could create created, like, how many years of a service, blah, 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 like a bunch of information about it, like maybe actually have the link to the picture instead of using that placeholder image. But for the simplicity of this demo, we're just going to have this name and ID. Okay, so now since we have the name and ID, let's see if we can actually grab that information. And then populate it. So, you by the way, I did put it in the public folder because essentially when you're using fetch or Axios, you're not using relative paths. You're using paths as if you were on a server and we know the public folder is access accessible on the server. So that's why I put it there instead of like the assets. In older versions of Vue and I believe Nux, do you have a static folder? But this is a little different. So we want to be able to access it. So I'm going to create a new mounted hook. And something I always like to do is I create the methods. And inside this methods, I'm going to create a um, fetch data. And then this is where we're actually going to do it. And the reason I do this is later on, if you ever want to test, it's easier to test fetch data inside methods than stuff inside the mounted hook. And then we can also do things like uh, mock the actual what fetch data returns and what fetch data does if we need to. Okay. Oops, so I'm going to close this. All right, so we have our fetch data here. And let's see uh, what we want to do with it. I guess what we want to do is is grab the data inside the inside that JSON file first. Let's just see if it works. So we're going to make this async. And we're going to use fetch instead of Axios. So we're going to do response. I'm going to wait it, fetch. And I'm just going to grab jo jobs.json. And then I'm going to grab the value of it, val. These are not great variable names. And this is going to grab the JSON from it. And I'm going to just console log the val to see if it worked. Let's see. 
All right, it loaded. Cool. So I see all 14. JSON, it loaded. Put in the console. Perfect. Okay. So now we have the the data, and now we can instead of having a million cards here, we're going to do a v-4, and it's going to be uh, well. Before we do that, we want a data object. That's always going to return our object, and this is going to return uh, the data that we're going to use in our template. So we're going to have a jobs, which is going to be empty, an empty. Uh, array here. Now, you're probably thinking, those of you who have done things like this, why I'm not surrounding this by a try catch block and then checking to make sure that if it fails that we don't break our app, you would be correct. <laughs> so I am not going to do that in this app, but typically you would set this in a try catch block or you would do some sort of error handling. There's quite a, there's a couple different ways to do that. We're not going to do that here. We're going to let the view ember ha error handler handle it if there's a problem. So if we can do this dot jobs equals val. Now, now we can do v4. So that's job in jobs. And then that should duplicate it for as many times as there's jobs. Remember, it always likes to put a, a key in, so I put job.id for a key. Cool, so let's see, we got an error here. Let's see, I'll refresh it. Duplicate key detected three. Did I accidentally duplicate one of the keys? Let's look at the JSON. Yeah, I did. I don't know. I'll make this uh, 18. It doesn't have to be in order. Cool. All right, so all the cards are now showing up. Now you're probably thinking, well, we have this name. We can pass the name in as a prop. Yes, of course. So let's do that. So now we have props, and we're just going to put in name. We're going to have a name prop. That's going to be passed in, and the title is going to actually be the name. So we do this colon title. That tells it to go ahead and to grab the name from the template. So we need to pass in the title name now. If you look at it, now we have no title because we're not passing it in. So if we go back to the home view, we now uh, we can do name equals job dot name. And we need to do it like this. Cool, there it is. So now we have all the names passed into the props into each one of the cards. It's responsive to a point. And uh, it looks good. Also, if you go complete, this navbar is responsive too. So it has the search and everything in there as well, which is nice. It's all built in. We didn't have to do anything, barely any CSS. And we have this somewhat looking OK site so far. So now we want to do pagination. So let's just add pagination in to this and then in my next video we'll get into more of how to set this up and maybe refactor this to add Vuex instead. Because if, well, let, we'll get to that in a second. So let's look at pagination and once again being lazy programmer I'm gonna look at pagination here and then just copy and paste the beginning the normal pagination. The simplest pagination we can do. Well, we'll do this the pagination with the first text and previous text. So there's here it is. So this way what this is saying is that we're gonna add the pagination. V model will be the current page. We're gonna have the total rows, the per page, and that's how it's gonna determine how many of these to put on here. And then we're going to have the first text, previous text, next test, and last test. That way we can easily jump to the front or the end, and then we can just click next or previous. You can even do things like put emojis in it, and you can add warnings. You can do all sorts of things. We're not going to do any of that. So right now we have just one row. So here's our pagination that we just copied in. But uh, we need a few things. We need to add a few things to our data object. So we need current page. I don't know. Maybe we'll just default it to one. And we have to make sure, of course, we have this. Let's see. We need current page, rows, and per page. Rows, not one, per page, three. Okay. And if we have all that in place, let's see if it has it. All right, cool. So. 
we said we only had uh, three rows, uh, one row, so it only has one right here. But it looks like it showed up. But what we really want to do is uh, have it be more dynamic here. So we're going to have this dot rows equal this dot jobs dot length. So now that should okay, cool. Now we have five pages. Of course, it doesn't do anything, but that makes more sense now. We're going to leave the current page as one because we always want it to start off with one. And we're going to leave the per page three. We don't want to make that dynamic. So really, what we want to do now is affect which one of these cards show up and li limit it to three per page. So this is where it gets a little tricky. Now, normally, if you had a back-end system, you could do something like this, where we would, um, on every single input, so I would come up here, and I don't know, I'll put on input, I would I would um, get the pagination records here. So let me make sure I have it. Yeah, so I would do paginate, and then I would pass in maybe the current page. And then in my methods, I would create a new method called paginate, and I would have the current page. And then I would do something here where it would actually go to the back end in some sort of file and some sort of system. Paginate, it's current page. And so that way, every time, let's see, paginate, every time a, um, so did that work? It says paginate, but I don't see, uh, maybe I'll do this. I'll just put current page. Let me make sure the current page is showing. And so if I press 4, okay, cool. So that's working. So the the real way to do this if you had a real back-end server is to actually go and do a HTTP request to the server and have it return back only the records it needs and then change the in this case, the jobs array of objects to the new array objects that's being returned from the server. But however, since we're just reading out of a text file, a JSON file, and we don't have that capability, we're going to kind of have to uh, we're going to have to trick it. So we're going to have to do some array manipulation and and do it that way, which is not perfect, but it can work. So the easiest way to do that is maybe we keep this jobs as just the source of truth but then we have something called display jobs and this display jobs will be just the three at a time that it shows that way we're not changing what the jobs are and then instead of having this in jobs this would be this in display jobs so let's see if we can get this work it might take a little bit of time so we don't have anything in display jobs so we could do this dot display jobs equals val. So now we see all three. But we want to kind of uh, do a slice of it and only get the first the first of it. So I could do this. Instead of having val here, I could do val.slice. And that slice is going to have a start and end. And it's uh, ex I believe it's exclusive. It doesn't actually include the end part. So I can do the end is three here. But to to make more sense here, I could do, well, this is fetch data just runs right when that starts. So let's see what happens. Okay, so it, we just grabbed the first three. Um, but you see here two, it's not doing anything. So let's see, can we find a way that every time you hit one of these pagination numbers, it shows the next three and the next three and the next three. Yeah, we could do that. So let's see here. So we're going to create a start. And that's going to be our current page, this dot current page, minus one because it's zero based, times this dot per page, which we know is three, and that'll give our start value. And then we're going to update the display jobs. So this dot display jobs will now equal the uh, 
this.jobs dot slice we're gonna put the start and then we're gonna put start plus three so this is gonna determine where inside the array index we want to start off and then we're just gonna add three to it and we actually since we're passing in current page we don't have to do this dot current page so let's see if that works okay so we start off with three cool so now it seems to be working. So now we have all three in here, and it's paginating correct. If we hit first, it goes back to the first page. Last, goes to the last page. So essentially we created a really cool paginated response just with a few lines of code. Sweet. Now we have a problem, which is going to be difficult to overcome, is that we have search here. And you're probably thinking, Okay, no problem. This is search. You need to go and edit this jobs. This uh, you have to edit the jobs in the home, but this top nav bar is in the app view. So we have a problem. This is top head bar. This router view is the one that's if you go to slash is is rendering the home route. But how do we get something in the top header here? to interact with something in the home route. Now, there's a few ways to do this. Kind of probably the naive way is to take a bunch of this code that's in home view, like this fetch data and paginate and everything, and move it all to the app view, and then just pass things back and forth as props and, and emit the, the events back and all that. And that seems kind of like a mess, <laughs> honestly. You could also try to do some sort of weird, um, you can do inject. There's inject and provide inside view, and you can be kind of like a poor man's view X, uh, which is a, p a poor way of, of, of sharing information. It's also not reactive, so it probably won't even work right. You might be able to get it working. You can do, do like an event bus. But I already kind of gave it away. You, it sounds like this is a perfect scenario to use Vuex. And if you disagree, leave a comment in the, in the comments below. But it would seem to me that if you need to pass information and have one source of truth between three different components, you should put it in Vuex. However, we didn't, do, we didn't use Vuex at all so far. We have everything in this home component. So this is where we need to do a ton of refactoring. And I think this is a good place to stop. So in my next video, we're going to refactor this to use Vuex. We're going to move everything into the store. We're going to get the search working. And then we'll also add in a few last things like the modal and the loading spinner. So yeah, leave a comment below. Thanks.